Hi! Today I have a great opportunity to test and review the Terrasic new flagship, the DA10 standard development board. In this video we will take a close look at what this product has to offer, how does it compete with other development boards and eventually determine its target group. If you watched my other videos, you probably know I have already collected some experience with different Terrasic boards, such as DA1, D1 SOC and D0 Nano SOC. Terrasic have always provided high quality products for a decent price. That is why I am excited to test the new flagship and to use it in my future projects. The D10 standard is a part of the inter-university program, therefore its primary purpose is to be a reliable education and development platform for students and researchers. In my opinion, when you are learning something new, it is essential to practice only with high quality tools. For example, if you are learning a new language, you need a good exercise book with understandable and well explained examples for both entry and advanced levels. A badly written book without a good introduction into grammar and lots of small mistakes will only make your experience frustrating and unnecessary hard. That is why I expect D10 to be suited for complete FPGA newbies, experienced students and even for most advanced FPGA applications. I also expect it to be well documented with a good amount of tutorials and guides so students can get started with D10 in no time. Alright, let's take a look at what this board has to offer. The D10 standard features a huge Cyclone 5 FPGA SoC with 110,000 logic elements and 5 megabit internal memory. In addition, you get an integrated UR core hard processor system which beats at 925 MHz. The FPGA fabric is connected to 64 MB SD RAM. ADV7123 video DAC for the VGA interface, ADV7180 video decoder, VM8731 audio codec which takes care of line in, line out and microphone inputs, a PS2 port for a mouse or a keyboard, an 8 channel ADC, GPIO and HSMC extension ports, a lot of keys, switches and LEDs a happy user can play with and at last but not least an infrared receiver. On the HPS side we have 1GB DDR3 memory, 2 USB, 1 USB to UART and Ethernet ports, and 128x64 LCD display and eventually an RTC expansion port and a few buttons. On the back side there is not much to see, except that my board has the serial number of 9. I wonder who got other 8 boards? Here you can also observe the ADC and the flash memory which stores the FPGA configuration. Ok, let's turn it on and see what happens. Out of the box, D10 runs a simple demonstration which shows that it's indeed alive. Now I will boot the lightweight desktop environment. You can download this Linux image directly from the Terrasic website. This Linux build is extremely resource and energy efficient and fits here very well. After connecting my USB mouse and keyboard Everything works straight away. The default build includes a demonstration software, which allows you to control different peripherals on the FPGA and HPS side. This is a good example how the FPGA and HPS can work together as a one system. On the other hand, the FPGA and HPS can also work completely independently if necessary.
You can also connect D10 to the internet and just use the pre-installed Firefox browser. This way you can watch my FPGA SOC tutorials on your FPGA SOC development board. Next, let us compare the new DE10 standard board to other existing FPGA SOC platforms of the similar price and performance point. There are three products which in my opinion compete with DE10. Z board, D1 SOC and SOC kit. So let's compare them. In comparison to DE10, Z board has roughly the same FPGA SOC size. It has SGMI, faster ADC and 256 QSPI flash memory. On the other hand, it has less DDR3 RAM, only one USB port and no SD RAM. Moreover, it also costs $149 more. The one SOC has 30,000 less logic elements, no high-speed expansion option and no onboard display, but it has 40 more user-friendly GPIOs and is $100 cheaper. SOC kit has the same FPGA SOC device and the same regular price. It has additional 1GB DDR memory on the FPGA and 64MB uh, QSPI memory. On the other hand, there is only one USB port, no user-friendly GPIOs and no academic discount. Before we decide if D10 is worth its money, let's take a look at why a high-speed expansion option is important. The HSMC option allows the user to expand a project with interfaces which demands high-speed communication, such as ADC, DAC, DVI, SATA, RF front-end, industrial camera link and so on. But keep in mind that these cards are pretty expensive. So, let's assume you are looking for a versatile FPGA SOC development board. What is the best option for you? Do you need a high-speed expansion option? If no, then just go for D1 SOC. Apart from HSMC, it has pretty similar hardware and costs $100 less. If the answer was yes, then it depends if you prefer Xilinx or Altair devices and development software. In case you already have experience with Altair and you have academic discount, then D10 will be the best option. If you don't have academic discount, you have to ask yourself if you really need additional 1GB RAM on the FPGA. If it's not important, then go for DE10, since it costs the same but has more peripherals. Else, go for SOC kit. Finally, let's see what resources are provided by Teresic, which can help one to understand and get started with DE10 board. The included system CD contains a lot of useful information. Here you can find official datasheets for each hardware component. Once you will start working on a project, you will have to read through datasheets many times, especially while using such component as SD-RAM. It is pretty convenient to already have all datasheets in one folder. There are also plenty of examples demonstrating functions of different peripherals. In addition, you can find well-detailed and illustrated manuals including the extensive, 127 pages long, main user manual. The included system builder utility is designed to create a Kratos project for G10 standard, which already includes the selected peripheral declarations, pin assignments, correct device selection, and so on. Unfortunately, it can only create files in Verilog, which means bad luck for VHDL users. The 
Since D1 SOC and D10 have the same SD RAM and video decoder chip, you can follow my tutorials and learn how to use them as well. I have also a few beginner tutorials and other interesting FPGA projects you may like. In conclusion, D10 standard suits for both beginners and advanced users. The academic price makes it a very attractive development board for students and researchers, while even hobbies like me find the price performance ratio just unbeatable. The HSMC option opens the gate for the most sophisticated and exciting project ideas. I think Terrestic succeeded in making a perfect flagship platform for the Intel FPGA University program. Thanks for watching and until next time.